Um, our presenter today is Gus Wagner from the Rocket Group. Take it away, sir. Oh, great. Well, thank you everybody for coming out here on a Saturday afternoon. Uh, uh, it's gorgeous outside. You guys just want to take this outside? <laughs> I don't know if we can see the slides uh, as well, but... Uh, we don't want to turn the sun down today. So <laughs> there you go. Right. There you go. So today we're going to talk uh, to you, to, with you, not to you, with you, about kids and parents and social media. And uh, I don't really like to use the word kids. What do you prefer to be called? Preteen. Preteen? Okay, let me, let me edit this real quick. Preteens, <laughs> parents, and social media. Uh, and, and thank you for having me here today and, and letting me be involved with the, with the grant program. Uh, this is something that's very important uh, to, to uh, ourselves, to our profession, to our community, et cetera, to just to get uh, better cooperation between all the family units, the community units. Uh, professional units, etc., to use and understand these forms of communication uh, to their best ability and to their best responsibility. And my clicker's not working, so I'm going to have to do it the old-fashioned way here. Uh, real quick about me, and here, here's my cards. Uh, take one, take two, if nothing else, throw it in the bullet subway. Uh, uh, I've, I've been in the business world for 23 years now. I'm a sales and marketing profession, uh, for the most part, uh, in, in several different industries. I've owned the Rocket Group for 14 years now. Uh, we're celebrating our 14th anniversary next month, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, we are a full-service communications and creative agency uh, where we're building communications tools, whether it's for the online world, the real world, uh, what have you, for firms. We've worked in the Fortune 100 for companies like MasterCard and Phillips 66, down to local small businesses that you would recognize here in Jefferson City. We are located here in Jefferson City. Um, I also served eight years uh, to, uh, to the state of Missouri uh, as a chief of staff in the Missouri State Senate. Uh, I've always been involved in, my, in the uh, community, no matter where I've lived. The Boys and Girls Club has been uh, something I've been very involved with here, and with uh, Executive Director Johnson, who's uh, twisted my arm for several different things throughout the years. Some of the organizations, I'm glad to help with your uh, cur past, current, and future successes. And uh, more uh, important for today is that I'm a five-time certified social media strategist. Um, and that, what, what that means is I've taken the time to invest myself and uh, money and time, what have you, into learning in the ever-changing worlds of social media. This stuff changes on a daily basis. Uh, and that's not a, a fib or a stretch of any imagination. It changes on a, a, a daily basis because it's a very highly competitive and very young field. And they're all trying to make money get more audience and what have you and such. So it's my responsibility to, to my clients, to my community, to myself, to my employees, what have you, uh, to stay dedicated to learning the newest tactics and platforms and what have you. So uh, we'll be talking about some of those new platforms as we go through today. Um, if you're on Twitter or any of the, uh, uh, you can find us on uh, any of the social media platforms if you just search it at Rocket Group. Uh, that's on the business cards as well. And our website is rocketgroupllc.com. Cute little tagline is that we launch success stories daily. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Thanks. So, um, tell me who you guys are. Talk to me, Mr. Preteen. Mm -hmm. Tell me what your name is, and let me know. Are, are you on social media? Are you doing anything? No. Oh, here we. Here's honesty time. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know. That's cool. What's your name? Uh, are you and 
Facebook and everything, Jedi? Or? I do not have a page, no. Okay. Do I know how it works? <laughs> okay. Do I look at stuff? Yeah, some. Mm -hmm. But okay. no, I'm much more of a texter, internet, a lot of research. That's okay. what I prefer. But I'm not researching what you ate last night, no. <laughs> Sorry, it doesn't interest me quite as much as the other stuff that I've I, I Ironically, you must have looked, because I think my most recent Facebook post was uh, from dinner last night. Oh, no. So. <laughs> I did, I, you know, I'll look up, like, is it a company? Sure, I do a lot of research. Sure, sure. How about you? Um, same. I've never been on Facebook or any social media whatsoever. Okay. Uh, and this is my first cell phone in about five years. I use okay. it for a clock. Yeah. It's a great clock. <laughs> so, so we, my family, we, my wife and I, we have one phone. This is the company phone uh -huh. because they required for me to be a little bit more um, reachable. Sure. So they decided to get me one. I got so, um, Yeah, and I just started texting for the first time since I started this job. So I've been texting for over 90 days now. Okay. Well. And they're still long and drawn out. <laughs> All and, right. And, Karen, and I really, I hate them. I hate texting. I prefer to just. By the time I did all that, I could have called you and told you. Yeah. That. Uh -huh. So yeah. I just I don't really have the patience for it, but uh -huh. I've had to kind of adjust because mm -hmm. so many of who I work with, uh, that's their method of communication. Sure. People sure. don't want to talk anymore. They'd rather text. Oh, yeah. well, I don't. I want to hear friends. your tone. I, I, I completely <laughs> like that. Yeah. My voicemail yeah. says, "I'm not going to call you back." Text me, email me, ping me, whatever you need yeah. to do. So yeah. I tell my friends the only way you can call, uh, get a hold of me is call me or email me. Uh -huh. One friend doesn't do it, so she doesn't communicate. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine with me because I'm not texting. All right. I have to actually confess that sometimes I, I text Brian just so I can then send a reaction. <laughs> Cut down on the time we're talking on the telephone, and you know, 
reach somebody, no matter, you know, get that message to them in a visible way. People, uh, the, the read rate on a text message, whether it's, uh, you know, friends talking to friends or, uh, or uh, a brand, you know, if Chevrolet wants to send me a text message, if I've signed up for that service and stuff, there's a 99% likelihood that I'm going to look at that message, whereas if, even if I've signed up for an email newsletter, I, uh, there's, it's less than 40%. Uh, that I'm just going to see that it's from Chevrolet and delete that. Mm -hmm. So the you know, texting is very effective because it's, it's right there in the palm of your hand. You can get the quick message and then you can you know, mm -hmm. choose to respond or delete or whatever. Um, you know, the teens, the preteens uh, that are you know, have the technology in their hands that, are, that can do this, they're going to use the technology to do fun things, to do serious things, to do uh, not so good things mm -hmm. with that technology if they are allowed to do so, if they have the freedom to do so, they don't have the supervision that would stop them from doing so, what have you. It's, again, going back to that responsibility. So what kind of questions did you guys come in here with? You're preloaded, I need to know how to stop this, or I need to know how to do this, or I, need, I want to understand this. Is there any questions that you had that you brought into the room? And it's okay if you didn't. Well, like I said, I don't let him get on. We're gonna. We might get him a smartphone one of these years. <laughs> um, but I mean, he's eleven, going on twelve. Mm -hmm. Is that not good to not let him be on? Uh, that's you know, that's a family decision. We yeah. What about your friends? I mean, do, do your friends have smartphones? They got iPhones. Yeah. Uh, I see that smile. Yeah, they, they got it. And they're on the internet and they're texting, doing those things. Yeah. They give you trouble because you don't have one. A little bit. That's okay. It's okay. You know, they're they've got their face in their phone like this, like I do, and some you know, my peers do, and they're not paying attention to what's going on in the world. So you've got a leg up on me. So, um, um, yeah, it's it, again, you know, the responsibility. You seem like a pretty cool kid. Maybe you're not. I don't know. I just <laughs> something like that, what would you do with a smartphone? If you had that phone right there, what would you be doing with it? Uh, games. Games? Yeah. Would you be sharing your number with everybody so they could send you messages <laughs> and stuff? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, I mean, again, that's part of it. That's how people communicate. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was 11 years old, we had summer vacation or spring break, even spring break this week or last week. Um, you know, I didn't see my friends for that week. Because, uh, you know, we were a bunch of 11-year-old guys. We didn't sit on the phone and talk to each other like my sisters did with her friends or their friends. Uh, you know, when summer break came around, I didn't see my friends for three months because, you know, I, didn't, I grew up in a rural area, so, you know, there was 20 miles between my friends' houses. So we didn't see each other until school started again. Um, so look at the advantages you've got. You know, it's, it's just, you know, and I wanted to hang out with my friends, and maybe I saw them once or twice during summer, but for the most part, they were out of my life until we went back to school and had that community that we were in. Now that technology has brought that community together to us instantaneously, 24-7, 365. So what social media is, and this is, is, is a, the big picture of what social media is, it's a place of, of truth and transparency and controversy. Um, you know, whether it's uh, people running for office, people you know, that are already running for president in 2016, and you know, people are discussing that election already on social media, and candidates are out there trying to encourage people to connect, whether you know, it's whatever party it's from, they're out there doing these things. We've seen in previous elections and the ongoing political cycle um, that you know, candidates have been made or broken by things that have been said about them or things that they've done themselves on social media. Uh, I watched a, a one presidential debate in, um, in last year, I guess, that. Uh, Governor Perry in Texas couldn't remember one of his uh, tenants, his main platform tenants, and, and flubbed the, his presentation uh, during a debate. And while he was on, still on stage there, still 40 minutes left in the debate, you could watch on Twitter, and I did, and palm my hand, his opponents uh, criticizing him, his supporters bailing on him, uh, his campaign just going up in flames right there while he was still on stage. It was all happening, and he was never a viable candidate. Um, you know, I guess he's going to try again in 16 or right now, so who knows. But, um, you know, things like that happen. Things like that happen with brands. Uh, 
Coca-Cola had an ad campaign about the, uh, the feel good or some happiness campaign uh, after the Super Bowl. And that campaign mm -hmm. crashed and burned the next day when people started co-opting uh, the campaign on social media and making uh, uh, political statements with, the, with their campaign message. So that campaign that they'd spend millions of dollars on in months leading up to a Super Bowl, investing that type of, that type of effort into something like that, crashed and burned in 24 hours because of what happened on social media. It's, you know, that's the, that's the controversy of it all. The, 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 the truth and transparency are just as important. Controversy is the stuff that gets, you know, things that end up on the news stories and stuff. But, you know, uh, uh, weather reports, and people finding things or finding people during tornadoes and such, it's been a very powerful tool for natural uh, disaster emergencies. Uh, it's been a very powerful tool for just getting news out and getting more people involved in things. The school, you know, all of our weather issues that we've had this year and, and, and this winter, um, you know, social media with the schools has been very important. Um, and Jefferson City Public Schools does a good job with, with getting that message out across the social channels. Um, you know, we've seen some activity here with the community banding together on social media for uh, to discuss issues within the Jefferson City Public Schools. So that's you know it's been a rallying point. So it's been a, a uh, communication point, just like I say here. It's the new water cooler. You can discuss. You know, I don't have to wait three months during the summer to talk to my friends. I can talk to them multiple times a day on Facebook or Twitter or what have you, and connect with these folks. Uh, just as I can connect with folks who I've never even met in, you know, personally, I can connect with authors and the president and who have you from across the world who have influenced me, and I can become, and you, any of you guys can become also a uh, voice of influence to, uh, across social media to uh, bring people to your cause, bring people to your events, bring people to whatever, uh, if you harness the power of these social media tools. Um, it's an economic driver. There are hundreds of thousands of people in America working in social media. And that's not just Facebook employees or Twitter employees. There's probably less than 50,000 uh, employees that are on, uh, working for the big six major social media platforms. But there's companies that, uh, like mine, you know, marketing agencies. There's people who create content, who people who are writers, you know, people that are, uh, this is an association town, all the business associations and such. Many of them have one employee, that's all their job is, just to handle the social media of, of uh, that association. So it's uh, been an economic driver. So it's something, again, that you, that you, I think that you can't ignore. You can't just say, I'm not going to be participating in this because it's such a huge factor in the world. Look at every TV show that you watch, or almost every TV show that you watch on television. Um, there's a hashtag in the bottom corner of the screen saying hashtag Wheel of Fortune, hashtag NBC News, hashtag whatever. They're wanting you to use that hashtag in a social media post saying, hey, I saw this on hashtag Wheel of Fortune, hashtag this. So they can track who it is that's communicating about them. They can, you can link up with other people talking about the same topic, what have you. And that's how these conversations and that's how these alliances and these communities grow online that become more powerful than communities uh, in the real world, towns in the real world, or, or professional associations in the real world. A, a, you know, it is, things gather up behind hashtags and change the policy of, of corporations and governments and what have you. So it's very important that people are connected to what's going on. And it's still a baby. This industry, this, this form of communication is still a baby. Uh, Facebook is 11 years old now. Yesterday was Twitter's ninth anniversary. Uh, <laughs> It's, uh, you know, and there's, there's uh, very popular forms. Uh, just last week, a new one rolled out, which is called Meerkat, which we'll talk about in a second, which has just taken the, the world by storm, has got gathered all kinds of attention because it's a, another way of even faster form of, of communicating about live events that are going on. So, uh, this, you know, we're not done. It's never going to end. You know, they didn't stop inventing telephone technology because Mr. Bell invented the telephone back in the last century, right? That thing evolved and evolved into our mobile devices, into our split phones and smartphones and what have you. Look how much the, the mobile phones have developed in the past 20 years, from you know, the, the old Motorola brick thing to our flip phones, to our clamshells, to our Blackberries, to yeah. our you know, full screen devices now. And now you know, they got so small, now they're making them bigger and bigger. So it's, 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 that's just the way of the world. So social media, I just, I just mentioned the big six of social media, and that's Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, um, Pinterest, and YouTube. 
Those are the big six platforms of social media. And those are the, when I say the big six, those are the most, uh, for the most part, the most popular um, uh, around the whole world. There are other platforms in other countries. Russia's got their own Facebook, and China's got their own Twitter network, etc. But across the whole world, those are the big six that have the most users, the most content, the most uh, investment. Um, Here's a dirty little secret. None of them are making money except for LinkedIn. LinkedIn's the only one that's in the green or in the uh, black. The rest have not turned a profit yet. But they're still valued at billions and billions of dollars uh, to, because people believe you know, they're not going anywhere. These are, these are forms of communication that are going to stay. And as, as people like uh, uh, my preteen here get older and they get more involved and, and uh, into the programs and such, they'll utilize it even further. So it's it's more than what you what you know. For some reason, my slides are cutting up on the edges there. But what else is there? When we talk about um, the preteens, when we talk about kids, when we talk about uh, students, they're using platforms. They're still on Facebook, regardless of what you've heard in the news. They're still on Facebook. Majority of teenagers are on Facebook in this community and across the country and across the world. But they're also using more. Uh, platforms that parents and adults aren't um, uh, as likely to use because we don't adapt, we're not as quickly to adapt to other forms. We got to Facebook, we're like, okay, I kind of like it here, I like it here. Twitter people are like, that's too much information, that's too fast, you know? But you know, you start getting to some of these other things here, we'll talk about what each one of these do in a second because you need to be aware of these. Um, you know, parents aren't going to migrate there as quickly as possible. Now, kids and students and preteens are still going to be on Facebook because that's where their family connections are. That's where their friends are. And they still need to be there and be visible on those platforms. Um, but they're going to go here because, you know, mom and dad aren't there, aunt and uncle aren't there, grandma and grandpa aren't there. So maybe I can get, you know, maybe I can get away with something a little bit longer than if I was on Facebook doing things. So what Tumblr is, uh, Tumblr is a, it's basically a, 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 you get a Tumblr page and it's a, you know, basically a blog, it's your own website. And you can post whatever you want to, whether you want to put word content up there, image content up there, graphic content up there, controversial content up there. That's yours to do what you want to do with. And um, you get your address, you know, guswagner.tumblr.com, and uh, that's, that's basically your page on the web. And you can put stuff there and people see it and they share it and it grows and grows. It tumbles like a tumbleweed that gets bigger and bigger. That's the concept behind Tumblr. Okay. WhatsApp is a, a quick messaging system. Um, it's more popular outside the United States, but uh, if you have any connections uh, in, in Europe or in East Asia, uh, they'll be using WhatsApp. And it's a texting, it's a uh, more intuitive texting program where you can send data and, and emojis and uh, files and photos and such over these. The, the app WhatsApp Messenger. I mean, it's still, you can get it here, you can use it here, it's just not as popular. But it is, uh, what you're, it is popular in the teenage and preteen uh, communities uh, there, so you, it's something you need to watch for. If they, you hear them talking about WhatsApp, that's what this is. It's a, mes a messaging pro platform. Yik Yak is uh, a recent entry uh, into social communications, and what that does. It's a geographically, it's a geographic situated messaging system where you can put up any kind of message you want, and it's anonymous. You don't have to tie it to your personal name or your or whatever, but it only broadcasts to a 10 mile radius. So it's good for broadcasting news. It's good for broadcasting. These are the the uh, altruistic methods to use Yik Yak. If you had a snow closure, a school closure because of weather, you'd put it up on Yik Yak and say that. If you had an event going on, a concert coming to town, something like that, a sale at your store, you could put it up Yik, Yik, Yik Yak and people within 10 miles would see that and come to you versus, you know, it's going to be a more defined audience to you, a local audience to you, uh, versus just broadcasting it to the whole world. So what Yik Yak's being used for uh, there was an incident just up at the University of Missouri uh, at the beginning of the year uh, where there were some harassments and false claims and such. Uh, uh, false, false, uh, there was just some bad stuff being broadcasted on Yik Yak that said things were going to happen at Mizzou. 
And what it did was that it made the Mizzou police and the Columbia police run around in circles trying to figure out what these events were. And it was just people pranking, putting out false information of stuff that was going to be happening on this gift gap. Wow. Um, it's been used uh, within schools for um, uh, bullying, basic bullying uh, techniques. Uh, because you know everybody, everybody at Jefferson City High School is on Git Yak, and somebody broadcasts a message that says, you know, Gus is going to get his butt kicked in the parking lot after school. Well, the whole school is going to come out and see if Gus is going to get his uh, butt kicked. And it could just be a prank. It could be something serious. It could be whatever. So it's again, it's something that uh, the younger set is adapting to uh, to broadcast local messages to uh, reach a large audience, a large local audience. Snapchat. Which you may have heard of. You know what that is? Yeah. You want to tell me what it is? It's like where you, know, if you have like, somebody you want to talk to them face-to-face again. It's uh, pretty much that. You can send them a video or a photo message and put uh, uh, text on top of it, type out a text message on top of that image. And it's sent. I can send it to you, and it's got a 10-second shelf life. So once I look at it, I better look at it quick, hmm. and it, it disappears. Hmm. And it's gone. So that's a wonderful app for people to use to send uh, indecent things over because they feel there's a security there that this message is going to disappear. So if I'm sending something um, dirty or foul language or whatever over this message, well, they'll never be able to prove it. Well, if you're really good at it and people have gotten really good at it, you can get a screen capture of that. And now somebody's got a picture of you doing something you shouldn't be doing as a preteen or teen, and then these, uh, we've seen a lot of this in, this, in this, the schools mm -hmm. where um, a lot of calamity is being caused because of Snapchat. So if you hear the kids talking, you hear the preteens talking about Snapchat, or they're using Snapchat, that's a great time to have a conversation with them. Say, hey, all right, let's talk about what's responsible, what's not responsible, what are you doing with this, who are you connected with, what have you. Uh, Facebook Messenger is, is a separate app for uh, just like the Messenger on Facebook. It's just another texting uh, system, another file system. Um, while kids, students, preteens may not be using Facebook uh, or perceived not to be using Facebook as much as they were, once were or as much as their parents were, they do like Facebook Messenger because it is a pretty nifty messaging system um, for, you know, again, sending uh, the text messages, the photos, the uh, attachments, what have you. All sorts of uh, hijinks can ensue uh, if they have that horrible tool in their hand as well. Uh, Vine is a, a very popular tool within the younger set as well. It is a uh, six-second video. You post a six-second six, six video uh, to your Vine, and it can be of you, you know, riding your bike down the street. It can be of you playing ball. It can be of you, you know, lifting some cold ones what have you, and, and people are posting these out there. And it's very popular, we know it's popular in the teenage set because there are uh, people, there are Vine superstars who are able to generate enough of these six second videos that attract enough of an audience that they're getting endorsement deals because it's uh, swaying the young teenage audiences. And there's, uh, there's a couple of brothers out of Arizona, I'm drawing a blank on their name right now, but they get, they've got like mall tours where they're traveling the country as Vine superstars. And they're getting, you know, Beatle-like crowds, new kids, like crowds of teenage girls to come out and ooh and ah, because, you know, here's these two cute boys that are making these funny six-second videos. So uh, that's something that you want to look for. Meerkat is the one that I just uh, mentioned earlier, and it just, uh, just became really popular in the last week to ten days. Uh, there was a, there's a big conference going on right now called South by Southwest on Austin, Texas. Uh, and last week was the interactive, the technology portion of that conference. And what Meerkat is, it's a live video stream that you can post messages to. So if, I, if I, this video is being shot or filmed live, uh, anybody who's watching it online or on, the, on their phone app could post comments to it, and it creates a conversation stream wrapped around that live video presentation. So... This is something that you might want to look out for as parents and people who influence young folks because if young boys and girls start going on there and just start doing like video chats and all their peers getting on there and start going, you know, hey, do something you shouldn't be doing, you know, uh, daring them, challenging them, prompting them to do things, 
it could lead to all sorts of hijinks. So it's just another thing that we have to be careful about. These things take place, and let me finish this, and there are hundreds more apps out there. Uh, if, if you've got you know, the iPhone or the Android or whatever your device is, um, probably not a Blackberry. <laughs> You've got uh, access to all the apps within the app stores and each one of those platforms, whether they're popular in America or they're popular in China or what have you. And you can use these platforms if, and to connect with people, maybe it's the kid down the street, the kid in your class, maybe it's somebody in China that you don't even know that you met in real life and you're able to connect with these folks. So I think a sign that is like we just talked about, like your friends, they've all got their phone like this, and they're doing this all day long, they're probably up to something. Okay? I'm not trying to, and I would take the next slide. Well, let me just say this. It's a mobile world. It's all, you know, they, we've got the computer station here, we've got our laptops at home, or maybe a desktop computer at home. Um, that's great. And people are, the kids are using those, and they still use those, and they're playing the games and what have you. The PlayStations are all connected to the internet now, so they can connect to whoever and play with people they don't know, uh, what have you. Um, but most of the interaction, most of the malfeasance, most of the things that we need to be watching out for are taking part on the on taking place here on the mobile devices, because these are within our reach 93% of the time. It's on your nightstand when you're sleeping. It's in your pocket when you're walking. It's in your cup holder probably when you're driving. It's always with you. You're always able to be reached. Where you're, unless you got a really long extension cord, you're not dragging your PC around with you, right? So it's a mobile world. And so if, if you know, just like I say to my wife, if she's doing this all day long, and whether you know, it's mostly work stuff that she's doing, I'm like, hey, hey, I'm right here. I'm right here. Let's let's pay attention to me, or I'll pay attention to you when she when I'm doing this to her. You know, it's the same thing with the, with the younger Missourians in your family or in your world. Guys, let's, let's put this down and, and connect with the real world. And maybe that'll break some of the behaviors as well. Because they'll probably miss, things are happening so quick, they'll miss that opportunity to go to the, the, the flash mob or what have you. They've missed that opportunity. And we need to teach uh, the younger Missourians as well that all the stuff that they're doing online, once you put it online, I'll, I'll say it this way, the internet is like a diamond. It's forever. If I post, you know, I posted the picture of, of the dinner from last night, and I posted some other picture this week of me and my wife doing something goofy or whatever, that's going to be there longer than my headstone will be around. <laughs> it's there forever, and it's connected to me. So that's what's called the digital trail. Everything you do online, you're le leaving a trail. The pictures that we put up, we were joking about earlier, about your, your headshots on the uh, Boys and Girls Club website, those are going to be there forever. Even if we change them, they're still up on the Google servers, they're still cached out somewhere. And if somebody searches your name and the right, you know, so-and-so from Boys and Girls Club, Stephanie Johnson from Boys and Girls Club, Stephanie's pictures from across the years that have been on that website are going to be show, show up in that Google image search. Just like uh, things I've done 10 years ago, things I did, whatever, as long as it's online, it's able to be found, and somebody can find it if they're really looking for it. And so the things that you're doing as a preteen with your phone or online and what have you are going to show up when you're looking for college placement, when you're looking for job placement, when you're looking, uh, when you're trying to find a bride. She's going to Google you and see the stuff that you did. And that's going to form that first impression for your potential college, your potential employer, your potential spouse. And, um, and, and, you know, it's the truth. People lose jobs. People don't get jobs. People don't get dates because of the things they've done online that people have been able to find out about. So this is something that we need to stress to our young set that uh, the stuff they're doing online is going to impact them, whether it's today, tomorrow, or 10 years from now. It's going to come back and get them. They're being silly online. And I say all this I say all this as a professional who works in these platforms all day, who believes in these platforms and, and, and sees the good that these platforms do. Don't blame the internet. Don't blame the mobile device. Don't blame the Facebook or the Meerkat or what have you. Just like I can't blame the lightning if it hits me. Lightning's going to hit me. Dogs are going to bite me. If I taunt the dog, the dog's going to bite me. 
if I put up nothing but junk on Facebook, that's going to come back to bite me. Because it was my responsibility not to do that, just as it was my responsibility not to hold the, light, the aluminum pole up in the thunderstorm, right? Or to wear the peanut butter suit around the pit bull. I'm, really, I'm getting with the analogy too. Right? Yeah. So don't blame the platforms. Don't blame the internet. We've got to look at the users. We've got to look at the people who are influencing the users. We've got to look at the whether it's the peers, whether it's the parents, whether it's the teachers, what have you. We've got to you know, look at these larger audiences that are using it because we've got bad actors everywhere. <laughs> we've got bad actors everywhere. These bad actors are going to you know, post junk out there, whether it's anonymous or under their real name. People are going to put up Instagram pictures about whatever. There's a guy on Instagram, his profile, and he's made, he's getting book deals, and he was just on the Katie Couric show and stuff, because he just goes around scouring uh, people's uh, social media postings, and anytime there's somebody that's drunk or doing something dumb or doing whatever that he can make a joke about, he posts it, and I follow the guy, and I'll see a post five minutes after he's done it, and it'll have 100,000 uh, likes on it already. That it spreads that fast. So if you ever, you know, whatever, you, you can get caught up in something like that and blast up. The bad news travels much, much faster online and in the real world than good news does. So watch out for those bad actors. The platforms themselves are proactive in trying to stop bullying and trying to stop stalkers and trying to stop indecent content. All of them have reporting features. All of them have, uh, you know, you can report a spam or you can report bad content. You know, if somebody's putting out bikini pictures and it looks like, you know, they might be too young or what have you, uh, you can report that. And they'll get investigated, they'll get shut down. But for the most cases, it's, you know, trying to plug a million holes at once because the spammer or the robot or the corrupt person or company, what have you, they've probably got 10,000 accounts and you've just closed out one, so now you've got 9,999 more to be putting the junk out there with. And that's just the way it is, because there's still enough people that are going to click those spam links and go and get trapped and spend money or give up their credit card information or do whatever. And that's part of human nature, that's part of anything. People have been scamming people on the telephone for dead generations now. We still see alerts from that, you know, with the banks and stuff. We still, you know, I'm sure there was probably one in the last couple days. So the platforms are proactive. But the users have to be proactive as well. It's our responsibility as users to report junk that we see, to report spammers, to report people posting indecent material, report to the platforms. If it's something, you know, it's running a something that's going to take uh, money or reputation or what have you from somebody, call the local authorities. Police have better ways of dealing with this than we do as individuals. Call, you report it to the school if something's going on. Report it to the Boys and Girls Club if something's going on within the community here that they can do something about. Or if something's happening at school, I'm sure you guys have got procedures. If something's happening at school, somebody talks to you, you can you got to just talk to the, the advisors here. Okay. Um, use GeoSearch. You know, search for what's happening in Jefferson City on Facebook or on Twitter or the internet or what have you that people are out there posting about. And if it's something that seems shady, report that to the authorities or to the school or whatever. They might not know about it. They probably do know about it already, but the chances are they might not know about it. You can talk to your friends and family about, you know, hey, we, you know, we've got kids in this family. We've got young kids. We've got pre preteens. Is there anybody behind you? You got younger siblings? Mm -hmm. No? Um, but if you did, you know, you, you could talk to them. You could be the adult, the, the older person, the mentor in this situation, and talk to them about how they should be acting when it comes to being responsible online or on a mobile device. So we've got to be proactive just as much as the platforms are proactive, just as much as all the institutions are proactive in trying to be good actors across the social media. Now, there are, you're 11, right? So you still got some time to get on Facebook because you uh, have to be 13. Thirteen is the minimum age on Facebook and many of the other social platforms. It's 17 on uh, on Vine and uh, Instagram is 17. So you. Uh, Or when you fill out your platform or you fill out your profile to sign up for these platforms, you are asked.
what's your age, what's your route, okay, but it's an honor system. They're not asking for your driver's license, they're not asking for your social security number or a co-signer to say that you're 13 or you're 17 to get to these platforms. It's the honor system. Just like when you're, you know, the, the rated R movies and stuff and you're sneaking into those. Um, and again, it's the honor system. So again, you know, this is our responsibility as the parent, as the advisor, as the teacher, the what have you, to make sure that, you know, if we know somebody is not 13, is not 17, and we know they're on these platforms, or that we're interacting with these platforms, or even just going to the websites, that they need, you know, hey, you're too young for this. Because the trust is on the user. It says user. The R got cut off. So the trust is on the user to say that I'm 13, to say that I'm 43, to say to whatever my age is uh, that uh, on these social platforms. And if we see anybody, whether it's you know somebody we know or we see somebody that is underage, we need to report them as well, or at least talk to them. So we've got to work together as the family unit. We've got to work together as the community unit. We've got to work together as our influence units to make sure if, we, if we're concerned about our, our Pre-teens and pre-preteens and teens on these platforms. We've got to work together with them and their other influencers, whether it's the school, their peers, whatever. Say, hey, this is the best behavior. You can really hose yourself if you're out there being a jerk on these platforms. And it's very important that we're a good example. That we're a good example as parents. As, as the teachers, as, as again, these influencer communities, that we're acting responsibly on social media. The picture of my dinner last night had our drink menu in it. Now, I posted that because maybe I'm not the best influencer. I don't have any kids. Um, I do have a dog. <laughs> but I don't think she saw the picture. Um, but if I did have kids, if I did have you know, a, a young set of followers. On Twitter, I do have a younger set of followers. It's, a, it's my, a more of an international audience where I've got college kids and high school kids that are following me because of marketing and communications, the information we're sharing out there. So that is 99% professional type of content. My Facebook audience is mostly friends and family and people I've met directly in my life. And they're of a certain age that they can handle seeing a drink menu on social media. So, but if, I, if I'm friends with my kids or my friends' kids, my kids' friends, things like that, I would be more responsible about that. We've got to be a good example. So when the, these kids that we're trying to influence and say, you need to do it this way, when they see us, you know, partying with the party hat on, you know. And we've got to be on the same page with these uh, teens and preteens and pre-preteens. We've got to be talking to them about what they're doing, what they want to do with it, how their friends are doing it and such. We've got to be un understanding of, they need to be understanding of us just as much as they, we need to be understanding of them and the pressures and, and the peer groups and the influencers that they have that are outside of our direct vision. And again, mostly we've got to realize with these real world impacts, and I'm not just talking about the digital trail that can impact their career choices or college choices, but the things that, the, that we do as adults, the things that they might be doing as preteens that are hurting people's feelings, that are driving people to maybe harm themselves, that are driving people to become reclusive or drop out of groups or drop out of school, these type of things. You know, all of this stuff, just as much as if I, I was doing it to your face, it hurts even more when it's online. Because who knows how many thousands of people saw that versus if you and I were bullying each other, it'd be between you and I. But you do it on Facebook, the whole school sees it. Or you do it on the Yik Yak, everybody within 10 miles sees it. So you've got to realize the real world impact. Just as much as you don't want things happening to you, right? You don't want to do those, to, those things to other people, right? That's why you're here on a Saturday afternoon, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be hard to do, especially with the 
number of platforms are available, but you need, if your kids are there, if your students are there, and I, and I realize there's teacher separations, and I don't know what your if the social media policy is here at the Boys and Girls Club or what the or national organization has. If there's any restrictions. Right. We have them, yeah. Okay, so you shouldn't be friending your right. students and things like that, but you can still monitor, you can still see what they're doing, you can still be aware of what they're doing, but if it's your son, um, you need to be paying attention to what he's doing, or you need to be his Facebook friend, you need to be his Twitter follower, you need to be his meerkat connection, and see what they're doing. And it's not a 24-7 job, but the fact that they know that you're watching, mm -hmm. yeah. mom's got eyes in the back of her head, uh -huh. and four sets of thumbs. Yeah. Uh, I was going to tell a story, but never mind. <laughs> My mom always knew what I was up to, before I even knew it was up yeah. there, because she'd done all the same things when she was married. So. Yes. But connect with those people that you're trying to protect. Be aware of what they're doing. And if you see those things, if you see them being bad actors, call them out on it. Have that conversation. Bring it back to the real world. Just as we tell our brands and our clients in the you know, corporate world, if somebody is trolling you on Facebook or you know, tweeting you know, bad things about Coca-Cola, well, you know what, we need to get that conversation off the internet and try to engage those people, get it off the internet into a real world conversation as soon as possible. It works the same way in the family unit, the school unit, the peer unit. Get that to a real world conversation. And I know it's hard. I know it's yeah. very difficult to do. But it's for everybody's best interest. And you've got to stay current. You've got to stay current. Just as I said, all these things are changing on a daily basis. You know, the meerkat thing just came out last week to the public. Um, and it's already, you know, got hundreds of thousands of users. And they're going to have an IPO and all this, you know, we're getting all these millions of dollars valuation already. That's how quickly these things move. So you've got to stay hip to the lingo. You've got to be cool to what the kids are doing and to what they're talking about. Because by the time it shows up on the TV show, Shows up on Glee or whatever that the kids might be watching. That was filmed six months ago. There's two other things have come up in the meantime. And the most important to all this thing, to all of this, is to commit. Commit to being having that conversation with the teens and the preteens and the students that are in your world. Being open and honest and truthful and transparent being the good example, commit to doing all these things, commit to keeping on top of what's new, what's happening, commit to using the platforms yourself so you know the workarounds that they might be working you around and you might not be aware of it today, but you will be tomorrow. Commit to start texting more than once in a while. <laughs> because if we're going to protect the kids online, we need to know how these online tools work. If we're going to commit to protecting the, the digital trails of our teens and preteens. Mm -hmm. We need to be aware of what they're doing that might be getting those trails dusty. So we've got to commit to do all these things. And when we always end with this, is that the two most powerful words in social media are thank you. Thank you for having me here today. Thank you for being here today, man. And you're going to be a good actor when you get the phone. Right? When you turn 13, you get on Facebook, look me up, I'll be your Facebook friend. And thank you for being here on a Saturday, a beautiful Saturday afternoon, and putting this together. And uh, we will have the video, I'll send you guys the video link, and you can share that with all the parents who aren't here that need to have this information as well, and you'll be able to use that in the future. So, thank you. guys, feel free to reach out to me anytime you run into something, or you hear about something, or whatever. Um, I will say, I, I, did, I skipped over one point. Um, the schools and the police uh, departments, I don't know about here locally, but the tools are available. I don't know if they're, again, I don't know if they're in place locally, but they do monitor um, certain keywords, certain phrases, certain uh, accounts, if they've got reason to, that have been bad actors. Mm -hmm. That, um, you know, if there's, if there's language floating around, you know, some flash mob, say, at Jefferson City Mall, you know, the Jefferson City Police might have a, a, a program in place to search for that. Those things are commercially available, um, and it's, they're in place at schools around the country. I, I don't know if they are here, but the, the institutions that we do take, uh, put our faith in to be protecting of, of 
folks they're not uh, in the real world, they're doing it online as well, is what I'm trying to say. So there are some security blankets there. I do not know if that's taking place here in Cole County, but um, I do know it takes place at the Highway Patrol um, and at other uh, larger communities and such. So it might be something you can talk to the schools about, see if they have those things in place and, and what those policies are. Joey, you had a question? Uh, just a thing about your website. Uh -huh. You can go on there, and you have a lot of little tips and tutorials that you can just get right on your website and click on and sure actually do. learn some. I think you just had the one on the hashtag, or you just had one. Yeah, we, we do. We've uh, been uh, putting, so our big thing is to, uh, our, our content is based around educating, informing, or entertaining our audiences. Um, and so we're always trying to educate and inform so we do a lot of the basic stuff, the one-on-one -on -one yeah. stuff, how a hashtag works, how to use your Facebook page, yeah. how to set that up, things like that. So yes, our, our, our website I is... I mean, that's a simple, easy thing for us that maybe aren't as savvy and don't really care to be. To get to know <laughs> and be so the, like I said, I, I looked yours up and there was a couple that I'd already listened to. So you mm -hmm. can go straight to his website okay. and okay. learn the videos on there. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So it was really mm -hmm. neat. Thanks. What is the one? Uh, rocketgroupllc.com. Oh, yeah. See, I'm not savvy in how to figure out which one. <laughs> he is. That's okay. So, guys, any questions? Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> good, good, good stuff. Very um, good. You know, I, I uh, love the point that you made about, you know, uh, moving the conversations. You know, if there is a, a yeah. bad conversation that may be taking place. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could, could you maybe share an example of, of steps you took to move maybe a negative conversation that was taking place in social media to the point where it was happening face to face? Um, we have, uh, there's, there's an example here, and it, it's not the best example, but it, it's an attempt of something we try to do, and it wasn't something we're directly related with, but uh, Jefferson City being the seat of state government, um, there's a, um, our hashtag for the most part um, is hashtag JCMO for Jefferson City, Missouri. So uh, we monitor what's going on locally uh, with that hashtag on Twitter. There is a somebody who was wronged by the Board of Professional Licensing um, in the state government uh, that happens to be here in Jefferson City, and they started this great big spam bot campaign where they were just sending tens of thousands of tweets uh, a week uh, towards the uh, Board of Professional Registration, or meant about this case in front of the Board of Professional Registration, but it had the hashtag JCMO in it, amongst others. And so it was just clogging up the works and any of our, uh, our clients or other companies out there that were trying to get, or the news companies, even the weathermen who were using those, that hashtag,